Hello again and welcome back. In this section, we are going to talk about safes. We're going to talk about safe design and all the jazz behind the safes in Cyberock Vault. So let's get started. Now, safes are nothing but their logical containers where your passwords and secrets are stored in Cyberock. And uh, part of my slide out here, it's stored in Cyberock. Now, uh, what actually happens in Cyberock Vault, so let's just quickly design one vault out here. So this is my vault. And in the vault, we have seen in the overview sections, we have something called as a safe. Let's say this is as safe one. Let's say this is safe two and this to be safe three right so you just take three for now you can have hundreds or even thousands of them now safes are just logical containerization of storing information like it's a grouping of information and what information do we want to store that is right we want to store our secrets so secret one secret two and secrets are nothing but uh, passwords or any other uh, information right and you can have uh, two more one or even hundreds or even thousands of them right so let's say safe two has three safe sorry safe two has three and safe three has five all right and when users connect to the vault and they want to fetch the credentials they go through pwa right so this is the ui and when they want to fetch the secret out here to connect to one of the server they have to be authorized and they have to be authenticated right what do we mean by authentication Now, authentication is a process of proving a user say who they are. For example, if I'm Max and I come to PVWA and say, hey, Mr. PVWA, I need to get to the secret. And PVWA would come and say, you need to authenticate and provide, it, and provide, it, and provide me with options, right? So I can enter username, password. I can do radius authentication. I can do PKI. So all these options are available. So I can very well select these and say, Mr. PVWA, here are my credentials. Please authenticate me. And those would be passed to the vault where, auth where authentication would take place out here. If it is denied, I would say that the PVWA would say that you know, you cannot get in because you are not authenticated or your details are incorrect. So I don't even hit out here, right? I don't even get to view the credentials out here. However, if my authentication details are succeeded and I log in successfully, I can view this data that is present out here. Here's the catch. When you authenticate yourself to get in to Cyberock, it doesn't mean you can view all these details, right? So if I'm a Windows admin account, sorry, an admin user, and this is my Windows account, and this is my Linux account, I can only view this one, and I cannot view this one. So these type of policies can be set up in order to make sure that even if somebody can successfully authenticate, they are not authorized to see or view credentials provided to the user because they do not uh, work in this department of Linux. So authorization. So authorization again is a process of validating a user and trying to determine if they indeed need to have access to these resources based on the job requirements that are laid out for them. All right. 
So authorization can be performed on these secrets or file or objects as we call them when they are stored or they can be performed on saves, right? It is a best practice to make sure that all authorizations are performed out here. So in the typical deployment, all of the authorizations are defined at a safe level. Therefore, it is absolutely necessary for you to design your safes in your environment in such a way that when you make authorizations, it is very clear, concise, and the process is very easy. If your safe design is poor, you're going to have uh, secrets that are visible to other folks in your organization where they do not need to view, right? So it is very, very important to design this in a proper way. Now, how do we design a safe environment? I'm glad you asked. The first point in order to make sure that you have proper safe design is to ensure that you follow least privileged model. What do I mean by that is, say for example, I'm a Linux administrator. If I'm only managing Linux systems, would I need to have Windows access? Pro probably not, right? So in the larger organization, we have teams that dedicatedly work only on these platforms and the other team works on this one. Similarly, I have database administrators, the so DBAs that work on SQL servers, Oracle and stuff. Now, do they need to have Windows access? Probably not. However, in a smaller organization, uh, you'd have like one or two administrators that take care of Linux, Windows, DBA, everything, right? So in here, you would need to have provisions created for these users in order to have access to all these systems. So overall, it boils down to the least privileged model. So only provide access to people where absolutely it's necessary for completing their job in their role. All right. So we will assume that we have a larger team because it doesn't really make sense um, for having a smaller team. I mean, and we'll have a look at that in a minute. So let's put out here a small organization. And towards the right, I'll draw a line out here and we'll say larger org. And we're talking about safe design. Okay. So we'll focus out here first. So you have your IT director or IT manager, right? So we'll put IT manager and the IT manager would have multiple teams under them. So let's say uh, he has a team or she has a team called storage look after your company storage where it it's dealing with NAS or SAN or direct attached storage or anything. So it doesn't really matter. Then you have your windows admins. So this is the second team. You have your Unix admins. Then you have your infrastructure where they take care of your routing, switching, firewalls, access points. So this is your networking team. And let's say I have a security team where they need to access uh, mm, security related tools like IPS and stuff, right? And they all report to this person who is the ID manager. How could I lose R? All right. Now, once you have this structure defined, the next step is for you to understand which are the storage accounts in my organization. So I'll have a SAN, I have a NAS, and let's say I have a direct attached storage. So all these system accounts would be stored in this right so this would be my safe 
number one. Now, Windows admins would only need to access Windows related devices, right? So they could be my domain controllers, could be my DHCP, it could be DNS, which is running on Windows. So I can only provide them with access in here, and this would be safe number two. Same thing I can do for Unix. Let's say this is my CentOS system. Let's keep only one because we have less room. So this will be safe number three. Infrastructure, let's say I have an ASA, I have a Palo Alto firewall, and in security, I have a Sourcefire IPS device, and I have a Splunk, same instance. So this way, I can create safe number four and safe number five. All right, so I have my safes designed out here. What I can do next is provide a naming structure. A naming structure helps you to clearly identify and help manage safe in a much better way. And normally what I would recommend is you start off with your organization name uh, with an airport code or the location code. Let's say I'm working at secure wire. Jeez, if I can write today. So secure wire, so I can abbreviate this as SW. So I can say SW dash location. So let's say this is in uh, UK. So I say SW UK dash storage, right? So I'll say STR and that would be my safe name. Similarly, I can have windows defined as SW. Uh, let's say I'm in Germany, right? So I'll just say DE dash win. If I had another team in the US, what I could do is I can just replicate this, define a different safe. So let's say that would be SW dash US dash win for windows. Now here's a funny part. If I'm having folks in Germany, I can only provide them access to the safe. If I'm having Windows administrators in the US, I can only provide them access to this safe. Windows administrators in US cannot get into uh, the accounts in Germany safe, even if they are Windows administrators. If you wanted to, you can provide that authorization. All right. So that way you can have proper roles defined, proper least privileged setup and better security. All right. So that makes sense. And we'll just add one for security because we are talking about security and we don't want security to be left out. So SW secure wire. And let's say my security team um, sits in uh, Singapore, right? So I'll just say SP dash uh, SEC provide them with authorizations on the safe. So that way, now I have multiple safes created with a design structure that follows least privilege. Now, this authorization can be provided on these safes. And we're going to have a look at that and how we do that in the next videos. All right. So I can make a, a group of security team. So I can define like a like an LDAP integration with my vault and I can create a group on LDAP, add all my security team into that group and say that, you know what? This safe needs to have the ownership set to this group, which is created on LDAP. And we're going to have a look at that in more details later. All right. So now we know how we actually define a safe design. Now, now switching back our focus to a smaller organization, you would not have to deal with this setup because uh, if you have two to five 
uh, administrators in your organization who actually manage everything the ideal practice would be to have uh, maybe one or two or three safes depending on the um, least privileged model that you have so if you just have uh, five admins out of which uh, two are windows and linux admins so let's create one safe for windows and linux all right so two people are part of this and let's say three people are part of infrastructure and security so this would be my knock and sock right so one and two and three following this model what i can do is i can create two safes and say secure wire let's say this guys are located in spain so i put sp dash win dash lin and that would be it indicating windows and linux and for this i can say sw um, let's put these guys in uh, argentina or ar dash knock dash sock try to keep and make sure that your names the characters are less than 25 there's a restriction on that so this way you can have a safe design created and deployed in your organization again it is very very important to have this design created accurately because when you apply authorizations on these safes you don't want to mess up right and you want, don't want to provide these guys access to your security tools and stuff because that would create uh, a lot of uh, issues and break the design of least privilege all right so in the subsequent lectures we're going to have a look at how safes look like how we create safes and how we authorize users on different safes stay tuned and enjoy